This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasoning such as the savory, the S&P bud, the oak, carry steak, and much, much more over at the madcanadianbbq.com. While you're there, be sure to use the promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, they have your butt covered. Hey, YouTube. Uh, Kyle, I think that's the cleanest you've done that in weeks. Yes. <laughs> Are you sober? No. <laughs> well, yes. I'm, I'm not quite through my first beer yet, so. Okay. Getting into the pumpkins now. Yeah. Oh, by the way, we pulled, just want to talk to YouTube people real quick. We I had to pull the last episode because the audio was all wonky. So, Sorry. Yeah, um, no, it wasn't your fault. It was strictly my fault because I, we do the video recording on, on my computer. <laughs> so it was strictly my fault. Um, but that episode, even though it's not available on YouTube, is in fact available still uh, on the podcast feed. So it's there. It, you just you, you just can't get there on YouTube. So if you're wondering why episode nine is missing, missing that's why. All right. Let's rejoin the audio listeners. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are we doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you, Jared? Oh, you know, it's sort of a coffee drinking sort of Sunday. I don't know what that means. Every every Sunday is a coffee drinking Sunday, but I'm I just going to ask you. <laughs> I I needed it. <laughs> I needed. It. I don't know. I was, I, don't know, I didn't sleep well. I don't know, but well, I'm sure there's a lot of other fans out there who didn't sleep well after watching their team play oh, on Saturday. Kyle with the transition game. <laughs> More on that here coming up here. <laughs> uh, first off, let's get into some Buckeye news. Yeah. Uh, Black stripes. One of our favorite topics here at the Sloopcast, we love to talk about every year since since Coach Urban uh, talked about it when he first came on. Coach Day continuing the trend here. Julian Fleming and Ty Hamilton, to no surprise here, um, getting their black stripes removed. I would say Ty Hamilton's a little bit of a surprise. Um, not the most highly ranked member of the class, um, but... You know, much like his brother, the stars don't seem to matter too much. Yep. Uh, it's and, and the black stripe isn't strictly about. In fact, I think your actual performance has not a ton to do with it. I think it has more to do with your mental preparation and your attitude and your work ethic and all that stuff more than it has to do with your physical abilities. But yeah, Julian Fleming we were sort of wondering, Oh, again, he's now the third wide receiver, but it's still so early in the season, uh, the 2020 version of the season anyway, that it's still a, a great, uh, still great timing. Still, still really early in the black stripe process for Julian Fleming to yeah, half, be half of the black, it. half of the black stripes have been wide receivers. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't, I don't think Mookie Cooper is going to be waiting too much longer either. Nope. Keep you all up to date as we're doing this twice a week. So yes. we want to get that to you quicker. Yes, yes, we can. Uh, but that did not stop us from from the curse. We have our, yes. our typical Sloopcast curse. Uh, one hour after I finished prep on the Friday episode and, you know, uploaded it to Spreaker and uploaded it to YouTube and sent the email off to Tony with all the files so he can post it over at Buckeye Scoop and doing all that stuff. Like, then I go, huh, done. And I sort of sit down, uh, start, uh, well, what would that have been? I think I started watching maybe the Lakers. Um, no, that, that would have been late. It doesn't matter. But point is, I actually took a second and sort of relaxed and said, yep, episode done. Great. And then eventually I open up Twitter and it's just like 
Pac-12 starting football again. Great. We just released a national preview special in which we talked nothing about the Pac-12 because they weren't going to play. But, you know, they they couldn't sit back and let the Big Ten play and not the Pac-12. I'll just say this. If we want to do a quick overview of the Pac-12, my pick is Oregon. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like USC is going to be better, but I don't think USC is going to be playoff contending better. So from a national scope perspective, I think really only Oregon is good enough, in my opinion, to talk about from a playoff perspective. Agree. Yep. I. Uh, and uh, yeah, they have a lot. They and the Mountain West, who are also now playing, uh, have a a lot to figure out still because of local laws and ordinances and restrictions and and all of that. The West Coast having a lot more travel between Asia, where this started, um, and population density, especially through the California piece of the Pac-12. Uh, their COVID situation has been much different and much more severe than we've had to deal with in Ohio. Therefore, their laws are more strict. All of this makes sense. Uh, but th- they have they have a little bit more to figure out than we do as far as all of that goes. I imagine there being no attendance in the Pac-12 all season. But as far as... The Big Ten goes, they're saying no attendance right now. You know, they, they sort of, you know, when they announced the Big Ten was coming back and then they had some press availability, I think the question, someone asked the question and someone said, yeah, we're not doing attendance right now, but we also aren't completely, I'm not direct quoting this, obviously, but we also aren't completely closing the door on it. It's a thing we will continue to review Yada, 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 bureaucrat speech. Mm -hmm. So we still might have people in attendance at Ohio State games or Penn State games or whatever games. But whatever the ruling is, you can't expect it to be consistent. You know, I think the SEC is basically just saying follow local laws. But whatever happens in the Big Ten, I promise you, wherever the law is most strict, which I imagine would probably be Northwestern being in the Chicago land area mm-hmm. was probably, or, or no, I take that back. Probably Rutgers or Maryland, wh- whoever, whoever has the most strict laws to abide by. Everyone will probably have to come down to that level would be my assumption. I think they're going to try and keep it even across the board. Yep. All right, back to Ohio state here. Oh, Jared. We, we have to say that the Mac is, is also back. Ah, uh, yes. Mac is back. It's always, always good to have the, the Mac conference back on. And and I'm not, I'm not exactly sure why, but they announced that pretty much all of their games are going to be played on weekday nights. I assume that has to do with money. People are like, what, is COVID more dangerous on the weekdays versus the weekends? No, I'm sure it's the fact that the Mac probably worked out something with ESPN because the Mac, one of the reasons the Mac canceled was because the Big Ten canceled because those Big Ten versus Mac games are what pays the athletic department bills mm-hmm. in the Mac. Not TV, not licensing those games versus the teams who pay them a million dollars to come into their stadium and get whooped. That's where the Mac makes their athletic department money. Yep. So why the weekdays versus the weekends? My assumption, knowing nothing, just maybe took a second longer to think about it than most, uh, would be that maybe it has to do with getting a little bit more revenue from ESPN who, you know, by the time these Mac games actually go underway, the NBA won't be a thing anymore. And the ESPN will be looking for anything they can put into primetime slots during the weekdays. Mm-hmm. That, that So why why move completely to the weekdays? That's why. Hey, I'm all for it. it means more oh, football. Yeah. More football. Hell yes. Spread that football out. 
into the day into the work days. I think the Mac should basically adopt like see it's tough because the NFL is doing Thursdays, which is just terrible. Can we stop with NFL Thursdays? Mm -hmm. I want to, we're way off topic. We're just talking now. I want the NFL instead of doing Thursday games, the first week of the NFL season, they always do that double header Monday night game. Just do that. Put the first one on ABC, put the second one on ESPN. So now ABC and ESPN are getting involved and just you can do East coast teams at the earlier. Cause now you started at like seven. Cause you have to make room for the other one, get your East coast games on at seven. So that like, if you're a, you know, if they put the Browns and the Bengals, we'll keep it Ohio. This is an Ohio podcast. If you put the Browns and the Bengals on that first Monday night slot, people can actually see the end of it without having to stay up until one o'clock in the morning but they don't want to do that because no one's at home on the West coast at four o'clock to see the beginning of the game, which is fair. Well, okay. Do the, the two LA teams or whatever, they get the, they get the later slot and you can kind of watch the beginning of it. If you're on the East coast and you, if you don't see the end of it, it's okay. Cause it's probably not your team anyway. Yep. And just yeah, knock it off I'm, with these Thursday games. I'm done with them. Yeah. Sunday, Monday, NFL Thursday through Saturday college. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Put, put, I would love nothing more than for Friday nights to just become like the night of the mountain West and the Sun Belt and mm. the Mac. If that was like just Thursday and Fridays, that would be as dope. long as long as the power five do not play out Fridays. I think that's part of the deal, right? Hmm. I mean, I'm still, I'm still all for like high school yes. Friday nights. Right. Which is why we should, to Kyle's point, keep the major programs off of Fridays and just let the, you know, the, the smaller group of five schools participate like Thursdays, Fridays. This all yep. makes too much sense. So they'll never do it. Yes. All right. Uh, let's get back to Ohio state here. Sure. Uh, last week, the, University or the athletic department came out and talked about the finance yeah. situation that the athletic department's in, over a $100 million deficit. Both Ryan Day and Coach Holtman come out saying that they're going to take a uh, voluntary 5% pay cut. Uh, the athletic department did come out and say that no program is going to be let go like other universities have had. So that's yeah. good. But in response to that, they're going to let quite a few, like a couple dozen uh, full-time positions go. And I think it was like over 400 other staff members are going to either be furloughed or redeployed or something else. Yeah. I imagine a lot of that has to do with people who worked the venues would be my assumption. Yeah, security and such. Of course, a lot of the security are volunteer anyway, but I'm sure there's a lot of people who have to work the venues who were full-time positioned, and I'm, I imagine they're the ones getting furloughed. Um, but yeah, uh, it, you know, just another thing to throw on the suck pile of 2020. It's, it's, it's. We shouldn't be numb to it, but it's sort of where we are. Where it's like, yeah, lots of people are getting fired. Lots of people are getting furloughed. Um, COVID's hurt a lot of people and it sucks and you don't need to hear me say that. Uh, let's see, but you know, no programs are being let go, which is great. And I want to say that $107 million deficit, I think I want, I want to encourage everyone to fact check this both the 107 million and what I'm about to say, because I'm honestly not completely sure which one is true. I think that this budget was put together with the assumption that there wasn't going to be fall TV money. I think that that $107 million will be significantly lessened now that there is going to be fall TV money. Um, and that this was simply put together before that. Mm -hmm. Um, putting together a budget for something as large as the Ohio state athletic department. 
I'm sure that's not a thing you can turn over in a week. Nor yeah. do a complete course adjustment on in the course of a week. Yeah. Um, I mean, I work, I work for a company that's less than a thousand and it takes, takes, takes us like over three months just to budget that. So I can't I, imagine how long it's going to take huge university of 50,000 plus students and then however many other faculty and employees. Well, I think this is strictly the athletic department. Okay. I think we're talking strictly about the athletic department. So it's however many people were employed by the Ohio State Athletic Department. And I couldn't even, I, I, I can't even ballpark for you what that is. But yeah. the point of the matter is, is that you can't turn a, a budget around. It's companies have entire departments dedicated to this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So point is that I think, fact check me. Uh, I think that this, not you, Kyle, we need to move forward. Someone else, the listeners, just don't take any of this. I am sure, by the way, the Buckeye Scoop. Jump over to Buckeye Scoop. I'm sure, I think Tony wrote something up on it. Uh, Tony will take care of you. All right, let's get into what happened over the weekend, which oh, I'm sure everybody's yes. eager to hear us talk about the weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a pretty fun weekend. Um, the mid-afternoon games, and we'll talk about all of them, but man, the mid-afternoon games were fantastic with just the sheer level of chaos and general bullshit that was taking place like it was great it was really really very good it, it sort of the first time uh, i know we've had a few weeks of college football but between there not being that many teams involved until this week we did have the return of the sec this week and you know it's you know it's still fun to root against the SEC, which is kind of you know it's because they're playing they're only playing other SEC teams right now, but still you root against the better SEC team, and you know it's 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 fun to root even if you're rooting against and cheering against someone. Mm -hmm. But it just this felt like proper college football nonsense and chaos this week, uh, more so than it had been at any other point. Again, we were sort of allowed to enjoy it because we it is no longer depressing. Because we know, even though we have to wait like three or four more weeks, Ohio State football is coming. It's coming. Mm -hmm. It's coming. It's coming. We know it's coming. So we can enjoy this now. And again, they're just being not as many games as we would like to have on. There was still enough to keep you channel flipping, keep me channel flipping. So... Uh, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. it. Just this felt like college football weekend for the first time since almost a year ago, and it's it's just great to have it back. All right, Kyle. All right, so uh, let's, do you want to talk about some of these games here? Then yeah, absolutely. Let's do that. All right. Um, just going to go down this list here that we are looking at. Um, Louisville and Pittsburgh. Uh, I'm disappointed that Louisville lost to an inferior team, but. Did that come over the microphone? That noise? I heard, it. I heard that car. No, that was not a car. That was my dog sighing. <laughs> it sounded like a car just driving by like with a loud muffler. He, he lets out these loud grunts when he's like relaxing. <laughs> he's a doofus. Um, oh, anyway, uh, Louisville, Pittsburgh. All right, so I need to I need to do this rant. Can I do this rant real quick? Mm -hmm. Our slip picks. And we'll get into the details of the slip picks later. But I went four and three, which is fine. Went over five hundred. That's good. Just just keep staying over five hundred. We'll we'll do fine. Went four and three. I I lost on. Louisville, Cincinnati, and Georgia. Uh, or Ar I picked Arkansas, but Arkansas versus Georgia. All three of those games, all three of them, I lost by a half of a point. All three. All three of them, Kyle. And this I, is why, everybody, you don't real life gamble. You don't real life gamble. They know what they're doing. <laughs> and there is a reason they have all those buildings in Las Vegas. It's, it's, 
crap. It's just, it's just the most crap. I am one and a half points from a perfect weekend. It is what it is. Such crap, and I'm not happy about it. Yep. All right, but yeah, Louisville versus Pitt. Um, I, I was, cr- even though I missed the prediction, I did. I did say that this feels like the type of game that will end by a score. And I did say that I really wish I could have it at three and a half instead of two and a half. Um, and that's, this is why I, I, I correctly guessed this game. I did. I, I predicted exactly what would happen in this game, but I don't get the point. Don't real life gamble. (laughs) Yes. I nailed the prediction of this game. I nailed it. One of our other picks here, Auburn and Kentucky. Auburn wins a final score of 29 to 13, which was a easy cover. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, it's, what do you, what do you want? It's, it's Auburn. I think Auburn's going to be pretty good this year. Um, the SEC, many SEC teams had a rough go of it. Had a very rough go here, of it this week. Yeah, next one here. We didn't we didn't pick this game though, but Florida and Ole Miss, fifty one to thirty five was the final score. Uh Gators pulling out at the end there, but boy, that was a back and forth game there. For a while, yeah. It was it was very back and forth. Um Florida's defense not looking great. I think we should probably point that out right mm-hmm. off the top. But Florida's got some athletes. The offense looks nice in the in the uh, wide receiver core. And Kyle Trask looks good. Um, there's some serious talent in the Sunshine State at quarterback right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, between Trask at Florida and I'm spacing on his name. Kyle, can you throw me an assist? The quarterback at Miami. Uh, I'm looking. I'm gonna... I know I'm going to mispronounce. Okay. I know I'm going to mispronounce his. Um, it's a, his this is the Sloopcast. We mispronounce names. That's what we do. <laughs> it's um, Derek. Derek King. Yeah. You could have just said King. You really could have just taken the easy way out and said, yeah, Jared, his name is King. I appreciate the dedication, though. All right. But yeah, uh, there's some serious talent in in the state of Florida right now at quarterback, and that that does not extend to Florida State, unfortunately for Florida State. Uh, but yeah, I really really like I really really like Florida right now, at least offensively. Mm-hmm. We'll see uh, the old. You know, it's sort of we have to play this game. Is, is does Ole Miss offense look really good, or does the Florida defense look really bad? And we have a sample size of one right now. Yes. And that's why and we're not going to talk about it. That's why polls suck and yeah. they should happen right away. But that's all we'll say about that. Yeah. Uh, Kansas State. Kansas State, Jared, yeah. over Oklahoma, which I believe was one of your final four predictions. Hey, yep. yep, 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 yep. But, you know, it's just... It's Oklahoma doing Oklahoma things is basically what it boils down to. Second year in a row that they lost to Kansas State. Yeah, but in the 18th year in a row in which they didn't have a defense worth a damn. I'm, I'm exaggerating, obviously, but yeah, let's just go ahead and keep Oklahoma out of the playoff this year. I'm, you know, it's sometimes you just have to, when you come on a show and you make a bunch of predictions, sometimes you just have to admit when a prediction is bad. And... Oklahoma does not deserve to be in the playoffs again. Now, I did not say that they were the most deserving and should be in the playoffs. I simply predicted that they would be. And now that we have the Pac-12 back in play, you know, had I known that when I made that prediction, maybe I say Oregon instead. Also, maybe I don't. The severe it's lack cr- of games that they're playing in the Pac-12 is it's concerning. It's crazy, though, that Kansas State scored 24 straight points to win the game with, yeah. with under under three minutes left in the third quarter Oklahoma scored a touchdown 
to go up 35 to 14. At that point, everybody's like, oh, yep, turned game's it off. over there. I turned yeah. it off. Most people turned it off. Only then to find out that middle of the fourth quarter, it was a tie game. Yeah. It, Oklahoma doesn't have a defense. They've never had a defense. They mm-hmm. In the past few years, in the playoff era of college football, Oklahoma's defense has been a joke and continues to be. And Alex well, Grinch was supposed to fix it, but yes, the worst Ohio State's past defense has ever looked was under Alex Grinch. Looking at, back at it now, yeah, it's a good thing that he's not with Ohio State right now. Maybe it wasn't Shiano's fault. No, we maybe all blame it wasn't. we all blame Shiano. And by the way, the linebackers looked terrible as well during that mm-hmm. year. And they looked good last year. Yeah, there was a lot. There was a lot wrong with the defensive staff. I'm going to say there was a lot wrong with the <laughs> defensive staff. Um, maybe we put too much of it on Shiano. That's all I'm saying. All right. In retrospect, yes. All right, let's look back at the other games here, Jared. Uh, let's see. Don't Iowa care, State, the care. team you picked to mm-hmm. be number two in the yeah. Big Twelve, the, uh, beat wins TCU. their first conference game over TCU. Mm-hmm. It's a W. It's a W. <laughs> uh, Oklahoma State returning after a, a really bad opening game against a pretty inferior opponent. Knock off the Mountaineers pretty easily. The Mountaineers are a quality team. I'm not saying that they're good or great. Mm-hmm. Um, but, it's, you know, it's not Rutgers. It's a good team, and they did what they had to do against a really good team. So yeah, I was a little surprised. State, I was a, I was a little, a little surpri- bit of respect back. Yeah, I was a little I was a little surprised about that. I thought based off of what I saw with Oklahoma State last week that this would have been a lot closer game as I picked yeah. um, the Mountaineers. So. <laughs> yes, yes, you were very sure of that. That's I think of our differences. I think that's the one I got over you. Is that mm-hmm. it? Yep. Yep. Yeah, that was one of them. Uh, yeah, that was our. Yeah, that was the one you got over me. Uh, let's we see had three differences. You won two of them. I won one of them. Is that what yep. happened? Yep. Texas, Texas beats Texas tech in overtime. Texas techs, uh, recovers an onside kick to t- then to tie it up and then wins it in overtime. You want to talk about turning the game off. I dropped, I dropped the team chaos on Texas the game predictor over on ESPN had Texas Tech as a 99.9% chance to win the game. Texas was down by uh, what it would be 15 points. It was down by 15 points with like, I don't know, something like two minutes left. It was, it was game over. They scored really quickly. Get get a one of the best onside kicks I've ever seen. Gets the onside kick. Not only get the onside kick, but got the inside onside kick pretty deep into into Texas Tech territory. Get an immediate touchdown. Get one of the easiest two point conversions I've ever seen. Did Texas look bad? Yes. Is Texas Tech bad? Yes. But. They came back. They deserve some credit for that. And I think it's worth noting that Tim Beck's not the offensive coordinator there anymore. Hmm. Interesting. Mike Yerstich is now. For the casuals in the audience, you might know Mike Yerstich is the quarterback's coach at Ohio State last year. I'm just saying... Maybe Sam Ellinger still sucks though. So could they beat Oklahoma this year? Yeah. Oklahoma. It's really easy to say this right after they lose. Looks very beatable right now. Uh, But it's uh, yeah. Texas not back. You don't want to go into overtime to have to beat Texas tech. You don't want to allow 56 points against Texas tech. By the way, you might say, oh, well, they went into overtime. There was a lot of, no, Texas Tech scored zero points in overtime. All 56 of those points by Texas Tech were regulation Mm -hmm. points. Yep. 
speaking up, letting up a lot of yardage, Mississippi State throwing over 600 yards against, um, I think I've heard this before, they claim to be DBU. No, 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 hold on. Let's, let's talk for a second. Four teams like to claim DBU. Yep. Uh, there's Florida. How'd they do against the pass yesterday? Not that great. No. Texas. Did we just talk about Texas? 56, many, 56 points in regulation. That? Yeah. How many yards was that? Look it up, Kyle. Look it up. I'm looking up real quick. Let's see here. Passing. They let up 377 yards. I and was then, actually expecting that to be a lot higher than that. But. Still a lot. Strictly yeah. through the air, that's still a lot. Mm-hmm. And yep. then LSU also likes to claim to be DBU. How, how'd they do yesterday against the pass? Over 600 yards. Eee. 600 mm. yards. Ouch. I will say this now. Yeah. Jared. Jared. And yeah. we can say it now, even though it's just should have worn my DBU shirt. One because it's just one game though. But you know what? It, it's still funny to look at it. Yeah. LSU's defense mm-hmm. ranked last Ooh. in passing defense. That's not good. The country. That's bad. That's real bad. Yeah. So uh it's real easy to say this because Ohio State didn't even play. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but if, if it's easy to say, I'm going to say it because it's easy, right? Mm-hmm. Who's DBU now? The one who let up zero yards? Oh, zero <laughs> yards through the air yesterday for Ohio State. By the way, you can buy a, uh, it doesn't say Ohio State anywhere on it because legal reasons. But uh, we do have a DBU shirt that suggests Ohio State uh, available for purchase in the T Public store right now. Man, like LSU just does does not look the same without you lose Joe Brady. Yep, without with both Joes. Yeah, the Joes are gone. You lose Joe Brady, gone. who was your and, and I saw some passing people, game coordinator. He's gone. I saw some pe- He's with the Titans now he's an oc in the nfl i think maybe i forget texans who is he with titans one of them but he he's often in the nfl right now he got a promotion he's not a passing game coordinator anymore yeah just google joe brady and so he's off in the nfl joe burrow we all know is in cincinnati doing his nfl thing lsu lost what made them special last year yeah, well, Joe Brady's with Carolina right now. Carolina, I wouldn't even close. Uh, but no, like, like I saw some people tweeting and one one person nationally saying, it's so weird seeing LSU without a quarterback. I'm like, no, this is the normal. Yes. What they had yes. last year was not normal. <laughs> well, and even Burrow needed help because Burrow didn't look good at his first year at LSU. He did it, but then they had a just a big talk saying, hey, we're going to, the whole offense is going to be on you. Well, they had, but they brought Joe Brady in. Yeah. You know, the, the big debate, is it coaching? Is it talent? Is it coaching? Is it, it's both. Both. Having Joe Burrow was not enough to fix LSU two years ago. Having Joe Burrow and Joe Brady was enough to fix LSU one year ago. Mm Mm-hmm. It requires both. Yep. LSU doesn't win a national championship without either of them last year. No. All right. Uh, All right. Before we go on here, I think it's time to hear from our good friend over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Your Uh, turn or my turn? You want to do it? Oh... Why don't you talk about it? You you got you got the spices near you. Yeah, you but my, my my collection of spices in this room keep dwindling as I slowly move them back to the kitchen. <laughs> so, um, I will tell you. I will tell you. Uh, I had a um, 
had some family actually go visit the Mad Canadian on Friday. He was he was. Well, over tell us in, about their experience, Kyle. Yeah, so he, they were um, Mad Canadian was in Cary, Ohio, just mm-hmm. outside of Finley. Um, in his good old food truck or his food bus. I'm not sure which one he really defines it as, but well, it's, it's a bus. A, it is a bus. So a food bus then, I guess. Sure. <laughs> uh, they really enjoyed it. Um, a mobile taste station. <laughs> mobile taste station. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, you can have that one, Mad Canadian. <laughs> That's yours. The mobile taste really station. Li- my family really liked it. The, the beans were good. They really liked the coleslaw there, but, it's the seasonings that really made it up. Uh, that really is the difference from the Mad Canadian. It was really good. They really enjoyed it. So if you want your very own spices, the way that you can kind of make it the way that the Mad Canadian does, here here's some spices here at the Mad Canadian BBQ uh, Let's see some other spices here. Coffee and Q. Um, one of Jared's favorite, probably be a good day to do it since it's Sunday and he likes to have coffee on Sunday. Uh, Sonoran Heat, one of my, one of my favorites. Um, Four Horsemen, which I really like it. You want an extra spicy? Four Horsemen. Definitely put that. You, you know you know the um, Frank's Red Hot Sauce commercial? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's the Four Horsemen. <laughs> that's the Four Horsemen. I put that shit on everything. Oh, he went for it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, be sure to check out all of those seasons and some more coming down the road here at the Mad Kid Eating BBQ.com. Promo code Sweepcast10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Kid Eating Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. Kyle, that was another great ad read. You're killing it on the ad reads today. I'm just letting you know. All right. Well, let's 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 see if there's any other teams that got killed here. Uh, do, Cincinnati do, do, do. won. They did not kill Army by any means. Uh, and I told you, and I told you, when you play the armed forces, yeah. it's, it's going to be difficult. A ha- it wasn't that difficult, though. Cincinnati had the game squared away. I would say that... How do I want to say this nicely? I'll say that Fickle has a bit of trestle in him. That's mm-hmm. how I'm going to say it. I wasn't that f- far. I think this was our tiebreaker game, wasn't it? It was. And this ended up 34 points. What did you put down for your points? Oh, like it was either a high 40, like 51 maybe. Oh, I put 42. So I wasn't, I was just a touchdown off. Yeah, it should be noted. Uh, I'll go ahead and say this now. Uh, we had two perfect scores. Mm-hmm. Uh, two people went seven for seven week one. Uh, one of them, the Mad Canadian himself. He's not just good at spices, I guess. The other one being Jay Nice. Nice wins the week. It, m- it must suck for the Mad Canadian. You get a perfect week, and still you, you don't you don't win the week. Tiebreaker. Uh, he had two less points than the Mad Canadian. He had it at thirty nine. So Janie's wins the sloop picks for the week, putting both of us to shame, Kyle. Hey, I got I got five out of seven right. I got four, but I've once again, because Cincinnati's one of these teams, like to point out that I lost all of my sloop picks by a half of a point. Does one matter if you, half does it, of one point. Does not matter if you lose by half a point. Or 20 points. It, it matters for my morale, if we're being still, honest. <laughs> it's still a no. It matters for my morale. I feel like I did a really good job, even if the record doesn't demonstrate that. Well, the, de- the record when demonstrates we look, when we I look did at the no- season. When we look at the season, it's going to say Jared went nice. four and three. Yeah, but... See, you're being too finalistic, Kyle. <laughs> I'm I am, looking because at, I'm looking at it... I'm looking at this uh, as a journey. Okay. And I did a really good job picking the games. I well, just had well, some unfortunate well, there's, ball there's bounces. You haven't won any season oh, okay. against me yet. See, this would be a great opportunity to <laughs> then kick into the Mad Canadian about great seasons. <laughs> ah, that would have been. Yes. Ah, man, we'll have to try and All right. do that one at a future All right, date. Let's see. What else here? Uh, Georgia 
had a rough start, had a really rough start against Arkansas, but found their, found their, um, offense, found their offense. Yes. I wasn't sure how they, how they were going to do, especially I believe after the game was five to seven going into halftime. It was five to seven. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they have serious quarterback issues. Uh, serious, serious quarterback issues. They start the game with uh, Dwayne Mathis, who is a name you know if you're a longtime listener to this podcast or someone who pays a lot of attention to Ohio State recruiting. He was once committed to Michigan State. He then flipped to Ohio State. He then flipped to Georgia uh, in many ways. And of course, I think Dwayne Mathis refutes this. But the popular narrative out there is that, and the timing does suggest it, if we're being honest, that essentially when Justin Fields announces his transfer from, or it was just rumored at the time, I believe, from Georgia to Ohio State, Mathis then decommits from Ohio State and then ends up at Georgia. So it kind of worked out like a trade. You can look at it that way. And if you look at it that way, uh, you're feeling pretty good about it because mm-hmm. Ohio State has Justin Fields. And if yep. that's a trade, Ohio State won it. It, yep. it wasn't. Dwayne, Dwayne Mathis went eight for 17 for 55 yards and one interception. He got pulled from the game. Mm-hmm. They ended up putting him back in in the fourth quarter after the game was over. Uh, but they, they brought in, uh, was it Bennett? I think was his name. Stetson Bennett. Stetson Bennett the fourth. Stetson. Like the hat, Stet- I assume. Stetson. Yeah. Uh, he, yeah. And he, he, and he came looked in, a lot better. He looked a lot better. 20 not for 29 a, for 211. Maybe that first half when he first came in was rough. He played the entire second quarter, I believe. And it was Joe Bowserman in Lincoln, Nebraska bad. He, I, wa- I watched him completely miss a dude on a screen pass. Just completely miss on a screen pass. Um, it was bad. It was really, really very, very bad. He did find a bit more rhythm in the second half, as Kyle alludes. That does make his stats end up looking better. Point is, is that, one, Georgia was 5-7 to seven, losing to Arkansas at the half. Their talent takes over. They have an insane amount of talent on that football team. Bennett was the fourth quarterback going into the summer with Georgia. They had one quarterback opt out. They have a transfer from USC who's not yet medically ready to play. You have Mathis who they pulled. They were on their fourth quarterback and it looked really bad. It looked really, really, really bad. Mm -hmm. And, and just because they made some adjustments to sort of better fit what Bennett's capable of, which I don't care what the stats say, he's still not capable of much. That, you know, if you, if you have to work around someone who's that physically limited and that just generally limited as a quarterback, the, the other teams are going to figure you out, especially mm-hmm. – you know, in somewhere as talent rich as the SEC. Point is, is that Georgia's not in the national picture anymore. Not unless they get medical clearance for who should be their first quarterback. Um, but they, they have serious issues at quarterback right now. And who am I going to pick in the SEC East right now? Florida, with the same with an insane amount of talent on the offense, including a quarterback who looks tremendous or Georgia who had to bench their second or third quarterback to put in their fourth quarterback. College football, you know, we talked about Joe Brady and Joe Burrow. College football is largely about having a quarterback performing well. That's that's a big part of college football. So I'm just, I'm not putting any faith in Georgia right now. Mm Mm-hmm. Wherever they're ranked, they're ranked too high. Yeah. Speaking of playing well, Alabama takes care of business over Missouri. Yeah, the final score could have been much worse. Uh, mm-hmm. Final it was, score ends it was up twenty-eight being, to three at halftime. Yeah, final score ends up being thirty-eight nineteen. Bama was nice. Bama could have dismantled Missouri. 
I mean, Missouri scored a touchdown on the last play of the game, too. And, yeah, like I said, probably against... I didn't watch one single snap of that game. Neither did I. by the time the mid-afternoon games finished up, including the overtime game with Texas, this game had already started and was already over. This yeah. game was over before I even considered turning it on. If that tells you about what Alabama was doing to Missouri. Speaking of games, it was over from the start. Miami. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Miami over Florida State there. Yeah, Kings for real. Two to 10. Kings for real. Last week, I said, we'll see. I said, Louisville's bad at defense. Louisville's always bad at defense. Let's, let's see. And this game, I watched with a little bit more intent. Um, I didn't necessarily watch the Miami Louisville game with a ton of attention. So I was happy to like really sit and watch King play quarterback against the team. And I know Florida state has their issues schematically and uh, all the other ways that Florida state's having issues, but they do have talent there. They have raw talent. Unfortunately, it's very raw right now, but they have talent at Florida state. So what, can Miami, what can King and Miami do against Florida State? And once again, it could have been more than 52. Miami, Miami, Miami owned Florida State. Miami caused six turnovers in that game. Yeah, it was six or five. Well, the two. And, and to take nothing away from Miami, six. some of those some of those turnovers were uh, really just handed to them. Yeah. Florida State looked horrendous so kyle do we want to revisit acc no I'm, I'm still good with um miami did you pick miami did i <laughs> i think you might have and if so you're, you're yeah, looking so. a bit prophetic right now uh i think i didn't pick miami but i wish i'm now wishing i could have all right uh i didn't watch any of this at all in fact i didn't really know they were playing tennessee and south carolina i i had that and texas a&m on flipping back and forth but honestly not paying a huge amount of attention to it you know you just been watching game day and fox the fox pregame special and then several hours of football later you know the interest starts to wane even for me a little bit um, so I had them on, I was paying some attention. I wasn't paying all of the attention. Um, again, neither team looks very good. Tennessee beats, but you know, more defeats than maybe even beats South Carolina, who by all reports is, is pretty bad. Uh, Vanderbilt, which is just the Rutgers of, of the SEC, Texas A&M only scores 17 on them. Um, ends up beating Vanderbilt by only five points. Not what you want if you're allegedly one of the top teams in the country. The middle of the middle of the SEC does not look good right now. Um, nope. I think there's a top crust of the SEC, of which I am putting Auburn, Alabama, of course, and Florida. Those are like your top three teams in the SEC right now. And I just, I don't have a ton of trust in anyone else in the conference right now. Now their middle is fine, but it's weird because the ACC, which looked like it didn't even have a middle last year, looks to have a pretty decent middle this year. Miami looks good. Notre Dame looks good. Uh, the Tar Heels look good. Virginia Tech might be decent. Uh, they handled North Carolina State pretty well last night. Um, not that North Carolina State is anything special, but they did it. No, yeah, and NC State was out with quite a few people, especially on that defensive line. And too. Tim Beck's their offensive coordinator. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Way to go from Ohio State to Texas. To, that's, a, that's a career in descent right there. Yes. But yeah, I, I don't. That's, uh, I don't that's have the weekend. That's the weekend there. Yeah, I, I don't have a ton of faith in the middle part of the SEC right now. I guess is all I'm trying to say. 
now. No, Georgia, that first Georgia week. looks to be a, like a lot of raw talent right now, but I don't like Kirby Smart at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't, I don't know. I don't think they're going to, I think they're going to end up pissing away a lot of that talent from being honest with you. Um, Agreed. You, you, your quarterback is not good. Your coaching staff is middle of the pack at best. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm burying Georgia. I know it's one game. I know it's one game that they won by 27 points. I'm burying Georgia. I'm going to wait one more week before I do that because I don't want to pull a, what's his name, when Ohio State lost to Virginia Tech and like, oh. Clay Travis, was it not? No, it wasn't Clay Travis, even though he can yeah, he can just go yeah. away too. Yeah. No, it was, it was somebody else I'd, uh, just saying fine. that, yeah. I'm not going to pull one of those. I'll, I'll give it a week. I mean, I mean, granted, everybody, it's going to be rusty. Yeah. Uh, so I'll kind of, I'll give it a week and see how, see how George does next week. So who did they're they, all on who, even footing though, right? They yes, they should be, but who does Georgia play next? Is Georgia plays. Oh man. Why does Oh now we have ads? Go to hell, Yahoo. <laughs> let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh man, this this website is impossible to navigate. It is. Uh ooh. They play Auburn. Oh. <laughs> Oh, put those dogs down. Ooh, ooh, yeah. I think we talked about this before, but yeah, this is going to be a it's going to be a tough road for Georgia. Auburn, then Tennessee, then Alabama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we, like I said, we can we can put those dogs to rest. It's no more no more bulldogs this year. They're they're SEC East. Streak there's only dies. there's only one bulldog, and that's Mississippi State. Yeah, who looked <laughs> good. I mean, it looks good, right? Mm-hmm. All right, Kyle. Um, let's see. Anything else? We talked about uh, Jay and the Mad Canadian tying. Uh, Duncan Oliver, uh, who we also refer to as Duncan from the Discord. Uh, he only missed on Louisville. So, good on him. Uh, let's see, Melissa, who's one of our future guest pickers, uh, only missed on WVU and someone else. That's not in my screenshot. Not sure why. Uh, let's see, rankings. Okay, okay. This website's being dumb too. I'm just moving on. We'll just say that she went five for seven and that that's really good. Why can't why why am I all of a sudden computer illiterate? And Kyle also it. goes five for seven. Uh, missing the, last, on, the last game would have been NC State and Virginia Tech, so probably that one. Picked correct on that one. All right, there we go. That's our that's our sloop picks. We won't keep going down the list. We're just going to highlight who did well, <laughs> and let let everyone else just have their week uh let's see anything else nationally we want to talk about we talked about the conference is coming back bama looks good um yeah i think we i think we covered everything on the national scope kyle yeah i th- i think we're good here not not a lot coming down the um news wise for ohio state here in terms of practicing and anything out of the training camps and all that is just business as usual and black stripes when they come. Yeah. Uh, they did practice in the horseshoe on Saturday. Um, Ryan day said that they're going to do a few practices in the horseshoe because he wants the players to become accustomed to that environment without any noise, which is going to be weird. Going to be real, real, real weird. I will just say these last two weeks in the NFL hasn't been nice to former Buckeye players. 
You want to save that one for uh, Kyle's Corner? Sure. All right. So I think that's it for today's episode. I want to encourage everyone to check out the master link where we have a bunch of cool stuff. Kyle's already shown off his shirt. I'll show off my shirt. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is a, this one's in the 7071 store. It's just a, it's a fictional Cleveland sports franchise called the Cleveland rocks. And Kyle is showing off a sloop cast offering. Uh, That is our, our crew. um, What's the word? Parody legally. It's a parody falls under parody legally. Uh, that's our crew parody shirt, Buckeye Sloopcast, with the stripes and the checks and the number 15, which for anyone that wonders, that's the year we started the podcast, 2015. So that's, that's why you see the number 15 on a lot of our merchandise. Yep, because of Zeke. That guy. <laughs> which which picture are you pointing at? I know, but it's, it, is it Zeke? Is it's, Zeke? It's too much of an angle. It's, yes. it's impossible to see from here. It's Zeke. Okay. That uh, is Zeke running over a pair of Oregon players into the end zone. There you go. So, or, yeah, you can, it, or, or you can have Krenzel running over a few Miami <laughs> players into the end zone. I don't think we have that number in the store. <laughs> no, we don't. But yeah, the uh, you can check out all that stuff there. Um, if everyone could check out the Patreon page, um, Kyle and I really want to start doing some more stuff with video, but we need better equipment. To, to start doing better stuff with video. Um, we'd really like to get some like video capable PCs going. We'd really like to be able to budget that um, out of the, out of the Sloopcast Patreon money. We want to do more. This, this is nice what we're doing with the frame and, but we'd really like to sort of step the video stuff up a notch and maybe do video content outside of the weekly or bi-weekly podcast. Uh, but we just need better equipment to start doing that stuff. So if you want to see us start to do more multimedia stuff, maybe have some 3D graphics and start doing some cool stuff, um, we would love to start doing that stuff, but we basically need to buy software and buy hardware and do a bunch of stuff. And we'd really love to be able to do that if you could just uh, check out the Sloopcast Patreon page you can get access to early episodes, the discord server, which is a lot of fun. The mad Canadian is often offering things in the discord server, um, pre- sneak preview on spices and exclusive coupon codes and all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff that happens in the discord server and on the Patreon page, and you can get access to all of that for like $3 a month which is like next to nothing, right? If I could get just a few, if I could get just a few of you, and maybe if you've been on the edge or maybe you've been having some, you know, if you're having financial issues because of COVID, then, you know, set this one out. I, I'm not, I'm not talking to any of you guys right now, but maybe things are catching back up. Maybe you have a couple extra dollars. We really could use just like a handful of people donating at that $3 tier, just, just if we could just a little bit more support out of the Patreon page, we could really start doing some more video stuff, which is really the direction Kyle and I want to start taking things. Um, we'd love to do more with the YouTube page essentially is what I'm saying. And we, we just need better stuff to do that. And stuff costs money. <laughs> stuff. Um, and also if you want to sponsor the podcast, which is this thing right here, on the, on the graphic for everyone watching on YouTube. Uh, if you want to sponsor the podcast along with the mad Canadian, um, mad Canadian will vouch for you. We have a great relationship. He's doing well under us. I don't want to talk, um, about any of his personal stuff, but he's doing well under us. And the relationship has been incredibly fruitful for both of us. And if you want to be in on this, um, sloopcast at gmail.com if you're interested in advertising we want to we want to work with ohio-based companies is is one of the reasons why the relationship with the mad canadian works so well from an advertising standpoint um especially if you are a uh, a beer company i have the big old saucy they're out of cleveland big old saucy sticker on on my bottle right there uh we had some success with wolf's ridge um we had i'd love to have a coffee sponsor 
<laughs> I, that's that. There's a lot of great local coffee places in Columbus. I'm sure there are many great coffee places in the Cleveland and Cincinnati areas. Uh, probably, you know, some of the other smaller markets as well. I'm sure. We'd love to work with you. Beer, coffee, I think would be two things that fit fantastically. Uh, and I think that's that's it. I think I've done a lot of talking about just podcast stuff there for a second. Um, like I said, we really want to start doing more multimedia stuff and we, we need a little bit of help either from sponsorships or from uh, people just chipping in at the three or so dollar tier over at Patreon. Obviously, if you can do more, that'd be great, but three dollars get you access to, like I said, early episodes and the Discord server. Um, ask the guys currently on the Discord server. We basically are like friends now. It's it's a really small, tight knit group, and we kind of all know each other at this point. It's a lot of fun. So check us out on Discord through Patreon. Um, you won't be disappointed, I promise. And that's my sales pitch. <laughs> that was a lot. I apologize. You can find the Patreon page either by just Googling uh, Patreon and Sloopcast or in the master link, which is down in the show notes. Um, all right, that's it. I'm done. Sorry, that was too much. I apologize. I have a last second Ask Sloopcast question here, Jared. Okay. From Suncard. Since this year, it, since this is the year of the tight end, mm -hmm. what minimum stats have to be met to solidify it? Mm, okay, so let's. You want to do a quick over under with? You want to do the entire tight end room or just Jeremy Rucker? Let's do the entire. Let's do the entire. Okay, so let's say, hold on, okay. hold on. Nine regular season games or eight plus Nine games. one. Nine let's, games. let's say nine games. Um, let's so we want to do like averages. So if you get over nine games, let's say my number I'm thinking for touchdowns. Six the number and the a number that, that I was gonna say five and a half. Mm. So let let's just go six. <laughs> Okay. Let's go six. Uh, you need to meet or surpass six touchdowns. Um, yardage. You want to say maybe about 60 yards a game? I was going to say 600 for the year. That's probably close. I don't feel like doing the math. That's So let's say 600 yards for well, the year. Nine, 60, nine games is 540. So you had another 60 yards somewhere too. Yeah. That's 600. So 600 yards receiving, six, six touchdowns. touchdowns. Oh boy, six Hold touchdowns, on. The 600. Next, the, the, next, the receptions can't have any sixes in it, Kyle. <laughs> uh, receptions is no going sixes. to be 59. Okay. <laughs> 59. Uh, that seems like a lot. Is it? I suppose not. I think it is a lot. Let's just say 59. <laughs> Let's just do 50, 50 reception, 50 receptions, six touchdowns, 600 yards. Okay. If we surpass that, you're tight end officially yes. for the first time since 96. Is that Ricky Dudley? We haven't had a year of the tight end since Ricky Dudley. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to throw that out there. Hasn't happened. All right. All right. Also, it's every year. <laughs> It's simultaneously both. Schrodinger's tight end. All right, Kyle. Uh, that was your first <laughs> item in Kyle's corner. Do you have a second item in Kyle's corner? I say not knowing. Uh, <laughs> these past two weeks have been yeah. brutal for, for former Buckeyes in the NFL. A lot yeah. of injuries these past two weeks here. More so with former Buckeye players. We yeah. saw... Saw here on Sunday that Chase Young um, went out with a groin injury. A um, number of others from the weekend before. Paris Campbell, I believe, is out for the year. Um, Nick Bosa. I was trying to remember which Bosa for a second. Nick Bosa, mm -hmm. I believe, out for the year. Ah, there's more. Um, I'm trying to do this for memory. 
there, but yeah, there have been uh, several former Ohio State players in the NFL. Uh, Malik Hooker. Yes. Malik Hooker, I think, is out for the year. Um, all of those, except Chase Young, uh, happened last weekend. Yeah, last weekend was tough. Now you add Chase Young to it. I don't think Michael Thomas has played yet. He hasn't. He, no, he didn't play last week or this week. Now he's expected to come back relatively soon, I believe. Uh, yeah. But he's not. He's not played yet this season. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it's been a it's been a tough season so far for Buckeyes in the NFL, particularly around the the injury bug. Yep. Other things here, as we're talking about. Sure. As odd as it is with 2020, I can say now with 40 seconds left in the game. Yeah. The Cleveland Browns have a winning record. Oh my goodness. They are, they have beat they have beaten the Washington football team. They are now two and one. Can we just call them Washington for Pete's sake. Okay. <laughs> and it is looking it is still a lot of time left, but the the Bungles or the Bengals <laughs> uh That's a just kicked a habit right there. Just kicked a field goal. They're up seven with three minutes left against the Eagles. So could this be Burroughs? First to win. <laughs> Burroughs won every game he's played in for the Bengals so far. It's just that the rest of the Bengals weren't on the same page. Yeah. He he's almost has 300 passing yards and two touchdowns here. Yeah. But All right. No, that's it. That's it here. Crew keeps winning. I know they have a game later Sunday. And unfortunately, be released. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. But crew's still looking good. Regardless of what will happen here, whether they win, lose, tie, they're still looking good. Absolutely. Um, yeah, looking forward to that. Um, just trying, trying to make it a season. <laughs> trying to do what we can to salvage a season. And I get, I'm a season ticket holder, and I get the emails about going to a game. And yes. I just, because they are letting small amounts of people in, and I haven't really pulled the trigger on that yet, but um it's kind of not the same <laughs> i don't know if yeah. i'd enjoy it or not to be honest with it you know because i'm in the i'm in the cheer section that's where my season tickets you'd have are. to you'd have to uh <laughs> yell a little bit more to make up for the lack of I'm, attendance and i know this is going to come across as a surprise to people who are on, who like only know the podcast version of me i'm a pretty quiet reserved person <laughs> which is true when I'm in public, um, not so much when I'm in my performative podcast mode, but I am actually kind of a quiet person. Oh, one of the games, I'm all go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all go. It's, it's funny because Kyle and I are like personality swaps on the podcast because he's more the outgoing one. And yeah, it's... oh. Wouldn't, wouldn't be an episode without a dog appearance. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't be an episode. He heard me say something like, all right, you're ready to go or something. And mm -hmm. I've been working from home like mo like a lot of people have been. So he's gotten used to like my tenor, my voice, my words I use when I'm about to end a conference call. So he gets really excited when he thinks I'm about to no longer be talking to a computer. Because mm -hmm. he's a puppy. All right. That's it. That's enough of this episode. Um that's it. That is it for you. Nothing in Kyle's corner or nothing else in Kyle's corner. All That's right. it. LeBron James going to another, but, another, but, but Kyle, I thought it was just because the East was bad. That's what everyone told me. No, LeBron James only goes to the finals every year. Cause the East was bad. That's what everyone told me, Kyle. That's what everyone told me. Are you now telling me that, he he can do it in the Western Conference. How dare you? How dare I? How no, that, dare you lie to me? That's all I got. Okay. Uh, tonight's ending music is by alternative country artist Lydia Loveless, um, who I believe Kyle, she is from Columbus. I think maybe more specifically, maybe Lancaster, but in the Columbus area. Um, I believe she lives down nearish you now. Potentially. I might have to look that up. But yeah, uh, Lydia Loveless going to end today's episode. Alternative country uh, 
superstar. I'm gonna call her a superstar, even though it's like an alternative superstar. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it that way. Uh, I like her a lot, and so we're gonna play. Uh, she's got some new music out. We're gonna play one of those songs at the end of today's podcast. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to listen to local music, drink local beer, and of course. <laughs> I totally blanked. Uh, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Lydia Loveless. What's up, YouTube? Or so specifically, Coshocton Kas- County, which is just northeast of Columbus. That's where she's from? Mm hmm. Coshocton. Southwest. Or Southwest. Coshocton. Hmm. Interesting. Where is she now? Did you also find that? This is this is bonus YouTube content. I want to say it's North Carolina somewhere, and I thought it was your area, but I could be wrong. What do you think, Apollo? Do you remember where she's based out of now? He's like, I don't care as long as you scratch my butt. <laughs> All right, let's rejoin our audio listeners. Would once again like to thank Lydia Loveless for ending today's episode. And I'd like to thank the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company for sponsoring today's episode. Uh, We talked a little bit at the end of the show about why our partnership works so well. And there's a bunch of reasons. One, his product's good. Let's let's be real honest. One of the reasons is because his product is good. Um, One of the reasons why... And I'm willing to say this because he says it to us. We do really good ad reads for him. One of the reasons we do really good ad reads for him is because it's really easy to do really good ad reads for him because you just talk about how good these spices are. And the fact of the matter is, is that they're good. And also it checks all of my boxes for me. Um, One, local company. I love supporting local companies. Don't let the Canadian thing fool you. That's that's a branding thing. Uh, But he's an Ohio guy, so... That, that box is checked. Uh, there's no nonsense in here. It's it's just spices. This isn't like grocery store crap. This is just spices. You know, it's 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 natural. Um, I know he sources a lot of the stuff from... Uh, I, I don't know exactly how much, so I won't say exactly. But I know he sources a lot of the stuff from within Ohio. I know that the coffee in Q... The coffee that's in the coffee in queue is from an Ohio roaster. So, you know, we share a lot of that same sort of stuff in common. Um, he's just, he's like an Ohio first guy. He's also just like a great guy. He's, he's active in our discord. We talk to him all the time. Um, it's really easy to work with him because he just sort of tells us to go for it and doesn't mind if Kyle says shit in the first ad read or that I just said it now. Um, or was it the second ad read? It doesn't matter. Second. Yeah. Point is, is that it's really easy to work with the Mad Canadian. A, because he's a really good dude. And B, just because he, it checks, he checks so many of the boxes of the things. What? You said A. <laughs> a? <laughs> um, the product's great. It's natural. It's from Ohio. It's, it tastes great. Did I forget that part? It tastes great. Um, we both love cumin. That's a thing. So it's just, it's really easy. It's easy to work with him. We love working with the Mad Canadian. Um, we Yeah, it's it's great. You can use promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout um, to get 10% off your entire order. Um, the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, uh, where he has your butts covered. That's the Kerry Steak. Kerry Steak's got your steak covered. Uh, but a bunch of these do, in fact, have your butt covered. 